I don't know, we're four yes, and a half hours into this conversation. Yes, sir. We have to stop here, change some batteries, do some backing up of footage before we start crying. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, where we left off, um, Kijiji has been informed. There's this yeah. whole Mavuno thing going on. Um, and there's a stable of artists coming in. Exactly. Yeah. And, but then what I, what I wanted you to talk about uh -huh. was this era of of new musicians that you started. So you, you talked about Nimless and Chat a bit. Yeah. Mr. So, Lenny. Yeah. So a, a couple of, because now a, a, a few artists were, were in between, I think their, their, their time with um, with Ogopa had the, like knew some new direction. So 2005 shows up and Mr. Uh, Mr. Lenny and Nameless show up. Now, now at that time, the producer that we were really listening to was, um, what is this guy? Um, uh, what is, what is this guy? This guy for happy. Yeah, Pharrell. Pharrell. Pharrell mm -hmm. Williams. So he had these very quirky beats. And so we decided, you know, Mr. Lenny has this quirky way of singing. And then so we did a, hey, that track, man. It's such a nice track. Mm -hmm. And I feel that we weren't able to release some of that material. And he, I, I don't know what happened, what he decided to do. Um, and I think even he himself was deciding whether to continue with music as a, mm -hmm. as a business. But we did, so So on one hand, we have got this new artist, we have got, uh, as I said, we have Dan Se Dana Seda, we have got, Helen is, is there, we have got Rebecca Dawn, um, we have got Aida Onyango, <laughs> we have got, uh, and now also, um, Waire comes to do, he asked me and Kanji to do some music for him. So we also re wrote and produced some music for him. Mm. Definition of a love child. Definition ooh, of a love child. Tell me what's your definition of a love child? Of a love child. Tell me what's your definition of a love child? Of a love child. Tell me what's your definition of a love child? Of a love child, tell me what's the definition of a love child? First up, in the quality, me explain to you In my listener, giving full attention for you Second quality, always full of loyalty to you Never slip away and wanna be up true to you Third quality, not only your lover but your friend Truly your companion, yes, until the very end Fourth quality, you stand by his woman every day Not a situation, I feel make him move away Fifth quality, the love he got for you is full of trust Insecurity, now your love is not a must Yes, and so Waire shows up because he asked us to produce and write some music for him. So there's, as a, there's this gospel thing going on. And then now we're like, why don't you even still keep the mainstream door open? Because you just never know which artist will show up. And so, um, who else did we chant? I'm trying to remember. Silayo. Silayo was there and she did some music, some collaborations with, uh, with Dana Seda. Mm -hmm. um, that song was so It was so nice, good. man, yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that was a very nice song. And um, on now on the playing front, Around mid 2005, I felt like there was so much on my plate, because now I was starting to to drop balls everywhere. Because like now schedules are starting to conflict, mm. so and then I felt like I need to focus now on myself, you know, and so I was like I need to start making an exit plans with some of these commitments that I have, um, and so I went and had a conversation with Eric. I'm like, okay. Because your because your demands of playing are becoming too much. Let me just go do my thing. So I, I so I stopped working with Eric in his band. Mm -hmm. So I was like, of course he was he was, he was upset. He was like ah oh, man. So but then even me I was like timing. I should have done this after we have done twenty twenty because I want inside this <laughs> album. So but I just felt and then I was starting to feel like I have, I'm burning out because now Mavuno Church is now I'm employed. So it's not a thing that I can say as I can't do it next week. So now the demands are also happening. I have to set up the worship, the worship, the worship band. 
and then we are meeting at Nairobi Chapel. Eric has got his gig that night. There was even some nights we were playing with Eric, and the next day we were playing at church. Mm. So that's when I was like, oh, no. And you know, Eric's gigs used to go stay late. Yeah. So I'm like, it is. I'm like, no, 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 no. This, this is, this is not working. Yeah, you know, dude, hi. You know, even, even the speed at which you're running over some of these artists that you, what you've produced, it's like for you it was just churning out things. We were. There's a time we're like a conveyor belt. Who else? Come in, record out. out. Remember one? that song, you, yeah. Jennifer. I think Mom, you Moema. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I forgot her name. Even some of the artists, I, 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 I don't recall. And let me also not let, let's not forget that in 2003, before I left Bruce, we had done a couple of shows with with we did a, 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 a performance with Susanna Weir. So I've also played with Susanna Weir. Uh, so I've done a, I've done some playing and yeah. And, yeah. and then now, um, so so not only were we chanting. But now I was doing a lot of session work. Now I started the collaboration with with uh, with, uh, with with RK. So he called me to add keys on some of his projects. So I'm at Kijiji. I'm going to 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 RK's place. Uh, so I'm everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm I'm you know I'm at Samawati because now I'm in Agido Kibukosi and Suzanne want me to do some things. So I'm everywhere. Team is asking me, can you lay some keys on this tune? <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in, in and everywhere, you know. So I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm messing myself up because I'm like, I'm just one human being. So I started scaling down because sometimes you have to. There are good opportunities, but you know, you need to know your limit, which was also a, a learning thing for me. And then I also needed to focus on like, what is it that do I want? Is this what I want to do everywhere? I'm like, ah, this is not, this is not feasible. This is, this, this is not going to work. Mm. And so um, I started scaling down. And so Eric, I told him, uh, hey, let me just start fo focusing on my stuff. I also told Four Winds, let me start focusing on my things. But thankfully, I also now ended up pr uh, participating in 2020. So a lot of the keyboard parts that mm. you're hearing on 2020, that one I was a real session musician. I did not participate in any writing. I was just hired as a keyboard player. Nice. Which was so nice because I 2020 I think is my favorite Eric album. It's a good album. It is for me. Yeah, it is my all his music is ridiculous, but my personal favorite. There's a song there called uh, Jana. Mm -hmm. Ooh, -hoo. yeah.
Do you know there can be an entire city of all of us talking about oh, Eric? Eric, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's he has done yeah, some amazing things. Yeah, so and let, um let me, and let then, me say this. Let, let me uh-huh. even come now to now where now where I piggyback to what I was doing. How I started how Keys of Life. Keys of Life. Yeah. yeah. We did a nice record, a fantastic record for Helen called Zama. Uh-huh. And that's when I came in now, my production hat, I completely wore it. And that was a... a, a, a you are not as a session player, you were the produced. produced and played and composed. Mm-hmm. So was, the entire album was shaped, I shaped it. So Helen is a good composer, so he'll bring these things and we'll arrange them. But I did the programming, called the session musicians to play guitars. I did a lot of work for that album. And then, uh, and of course it went on to be a success because it had been a while since there was that type of album that had been produced. I don't, I don't recall if there's any other record that there is for that type of instrumental music. I don't, I don't know. Yep. So he, he, so we paved the way. So, and thanks to Kanji, because he's the one who saw the need and like, why don't you guys do an instrumental record? Um, Kanji would push you a lot to bring out you. Yeah, he, he, he saw that, you know, there's uncharted territory. Here we have an opportunity to define something, to bring something new. And that's what one thing Kanji has. Mm. He has this thing of just, it's like he just knows where, let's go this way. That's in terms of even the heartbeat of music and just crazy ideas, you know. And that was so revolutionary what he did you know for me i was just like yeah yeah that's something to do why not but he was like for him i think he was like let's let's make a statement let's contribute to this scene you know mm. and i think he he saw it and so when he laid that for, on me and helen we're like okay let's go and let's go ahead and do it and so we did uh, zamar and zamar came out in zamar Sept- was the first instrumental yeah. album and it came yeah. out when in in september of 2005 Mm-hmm. But we had already been doing sessions from June, July. So the album came out in September. Yeah. Now, just after it came out, around the period of the referendum, you remember the first ref- yep. the, the Chungwa and the Nini in 2005. Um, there was, there was, yeah, there, yeah. There was the there was the there was a lull. So there was a day I was just chilling in the studio. Then Kanji says, "Now that you've done Helens, because I'd been doing my own demos for my own music." that I'll just put aside. I'm like, you just do your own music, your own album. You've been able to produce the guy, make yourself the artist and release an album. So I thought about it. Had you thought about doing an album no, for yourself? No, never. I, I knew that I had tunes, but not an album. I knew that I wanted to do, like, do one or two mm. tunes and see how I sound for my own music. And I think even I'd done that before even Helen's. Mm. So I'd already been practicing about and hearing I'd record and hear it. Um, so he asked me, like, why don't you do? I was like, really, yeah? Like, yeah. So for him, he's like, you just, <laughs> you've just done an album. Do yours. So October 16th, a day after, my, after, a day after I turned 26, I sat down and worked on Keys of Life. And the first tune I wrote for myself is a song called uh, Amka Twende. Mm.
and yeah, and up till now I've done something that I've been unable to do. That album, I finished it in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I've been unable to do that ever since. I guess, I guess, because it was, yeah, because it was, it was, it was. Um, everything was just. I probably I didn't know even I was ready. So even the tunes just showed up, you know. And by December the album was out, and then that is when I launched myself as a solo performing artist. Mm -hmm. So when we launched the album in uh, in in 2005 at Allianz, yep, that's when now. And by then I'd already. I'd finished this commitments. I told guys, okay, now let me go do my thing. But in between that, there was still Mavuno going on, and then now there's there's now I needed to set a band. So I just I'd, so I called Henry, all these guys that I've been working with, and I called Eric. Eric was able to contribute a tune, you know, and it was a, yeah, it was fantastic, man. It was it was my first time to have my own show because for a long time I'd been I'd been a side man from the days of playing at church. I'd always been the, uh, at the back and accompanies. But now, it was a new type of anxiety. Guys are paying to come and see you. <laughs> yeah, that, that backstage there, I was like, woo hoo, -hoo. We We're ready, but I was like, ah. ah. But we had a fantastic show. And, 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 and that just, I'm where I am because of that. Keys, right of, there, yeah. keys of life. I, and probably this is what happens. It, it's a key that opened, you know? And... And I have to say, 2005, we chanted so much. Yep. Something when I, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember what else we did. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, we did an Nairobi Chapel album. We did Cheesy. We did Helen. We did myself. You did the DNG. We did the DNG. We did the uh, Waire. We did Mr. Lenny. We did. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of projects we did. Yep. Yeah, which which is like every month there's an album we're working <laughs> and on. And that's the thing. Every that's month a... there's that every single month there's a project we're working on. And generally people take two years to work on one project alone. Yep. But we are churning stuff. Kipawa, is it Kip no, Kipawa? Kipawa, yeah, those Kipawa are, those, album. Those are, those, yeah. Are, those are Tizika. Tizika, no, Tizika was even before I before even I joined. Mm -hmm, okay, now, okay. let me even go back to 2004. In 2004, we started doing sessions, me and Eric, me, not, me and Kanji, before we went for the tour, at Kasanga Studio in, 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 in Westlands. Yes. And that's why I reconnected with Gideon Kimanzi. Uh -huh. So even he helped us do a lot of the demos. And some of the tunes, are even on my records, that I collaborated with Kanji, we wrote them there at Kasanga's. And I actually, I did an, 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 an al a tune for Kanji that played on a rock, a rock song. We, we recorded a rock song. And I play drums. <laughs> That's crazy. That, yeah, that, and that had been a while. I'd not been playing drums in a while, but they needed a drummer and there's no drums. I told guys I can't play these drums. Because you know, rock is not, rock just needs you to have a pocket and just play hard. Mm. So like, really? I'm like, yeah, give me the, give me the headphones. Give me a click track. And I played. So when I had it playing on Capital FM, I'm like, well. I still got it. I still have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, so, yeah. Um, uh, when 2020 came out, oh man, because it came out in 20, 2006, yeah. Even before 2006, me, this is where now my intro came to you. Uh -huh. And I have to say, how, oh, BNG? Uh, how pivotal exactly you are in hip hop, which you oh, may yeah. not understand. So, me, I'm listening to DNG's album, and I'm like, the studio where this song has been released has to become my new home. And remember Inlay, DNG had an amazing Inlay, yes, where I had details about who the producer was. The song called Benzi, Aaron did it. The song yeah. Father Father, I did it. Uh, yes, Aaron, you did some some pretty. I did. I, did, I think those are two songs, two or three, two. I forgot how many songs I did for DNG. Father, 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 I wanna thank you now. Father, 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 I wanna praise you now. Lift your name on high and glorify your name. I give you exaltations and lift your name on high. Yo, you are my soul. 
water But I'm beating up by the weather Still so surviving like an alligator When si kweli mimi ni meo na mengi Miaka yangu wifupi ni mekula chumbi nyingi Teka sikio ni kusimulie hadithi Si mimi nilitunga kwa nini ushahidi Mimi huyo yesu waka ni oko Wana kunituma kusema ni meo koka Kwa furaha siku sita siku ngoja Haya yote miaka miwili ilio pita Papo hapo nika kumbwa na shida Mimi situi ni nini ilifanyika Mimi nikale mewa wokovu ukanishinda Ijili nilikuwa karibu kuiata Hapo nipo mola alipo kuja Haka nipa uwezo haka nile kweza But remember, there's those two, his father, father, and then, but Mpenzi now ended up becoming, uh, it took a trajectory it's, it's himself. It's been a song to yeah. date, to be honest. Yeah. It, it took someone, yeah. and I was surprised, because when, when DNG came and sang it, because it's true, DNG at least, quite, quite an interesting musician, because he has got all these things and he sings, he writes the melodies, which is very rare for someone who does hip hop. Mm. Like, how do you write even this hook for, because it come with everything and, 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 and he sang it, and then of course there's Manjero who, was, who didn't want to be on the private eye, a private <laughs> public, a public yeah. eye yeah. and then also there's uh kanji for some reason was like no i don't want to be all over because i think he had been on so many, <laughs> many albums. like i can't my voice can't be even on the end so it's like so that's on manjero and i thought i don't know who introduced i think it's kanji who, who came up with manjero I'm trying to remember how i met manjero and he came and toyed up man and when i had him i was like okay and then what i liked about dng's brief he told me like he wanted like a more ballady uh, mm. R and B vibe. I was like, I, I'm the guy. That's and even it. the even the even the patch, the type of piano, the way it sounds, mm -hmm. and that car cassine thing, the yeah. thing, I like. I know how to give this guy what he wants. <laughs> He's come to the right guy. Yep. Yeah. So. It was, um, yeah. It was something. That was, good. Those, 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 that was a good tune. Do even, even, even when you played it, because uh, 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 I'd not heard it until you interviewed DNG, I listened to it. I was like, oh, that was a nice tune, man. Yeah. That's a very nice tune. Yeah. This one. <laughs> so, 2006, January 4th, uh -huh. Milele have a concert. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so, wow. That was, um, 
of course my relationship with 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 kanji and uh, so he, they say that he says that we, we have not had a concert in a while and then also wanted to raise to Kenyans raise for Kenyans. yeah to raise some 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 money and get food and whatever it was more it was also a charity event mm. i think people were supposed to bring something yes you, you bring food bring food, food as, yeah, your to, as your ticket yeah, yep. yeah so which was i think such a very clever idea mm. you know and so at that time also i meet a gentleman who who uh, is referred to me for, by julian masharia's sister his name is brian kagoro <laughs> who's from zimbabwe Ooh -wee. so he so uh he comes to uh, like i work at kijiji it's like will you come and say like i've got this project that i'm doing uh for for a couple of countries called Africa let's worship. Um this is called Afro. I think that's what he called it. And he said like uh you got some nice tunes. Can you guys write for for me some tunes? So me and Kanji were like okay, sure. Um uh, so we met and then it's like actually the recording is going to happen in in Zimbabwe. Uh, in Zimbabwe, but that's much later. So we started the planning and then writing the music and the demos. But then there's the concert you're saying. Because I met Brian Kagoro before we did the concert or mm. after one of the two and so uh Kanji's like we're gonna get the band so Ka Kaima Kaima I think Kaima was, was around and so it's like can you put up the band for us I'm like absolutely so I got of course my characters Aizo myself Henry who's playing bass Kongo who's playing bass mm. and then of course me and Kaima will share key keyboards mm. And it was such a nice concert at Nairobi Baptist. Yep. One of the one of the concerts that I've really enjoyed yep. to play. Because now I was I was I was not do, doing a lot of keyboard parts because I, I for me it was fun because now Kaima is, is also handling and he's the musical director, you know. So me I'm just like a side man, like do you want me to what do you want me to play? You know, which, which sometimes is good to to take that that um that that step the back. back. Yeah, because yeah, cause cause now I've just been doing a lot of there's a thing we did with Kanji which was called Rukaduka. Ah yeah 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 I remember even. So we started sh sh doing this 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 uh, small shopping shows, malls. Yeah, yep. shopping malls selling selling CDs in at that time it was Nakuma Junction. Yep. Now it's the Junction. Prestige mm. went to town. We did yep. so went to churches. Like we're doing all these small small shows which was so much fun. And this trip up band yep. go set up play. Ah man, we gigged. We we really that's now when I, my 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 lifting for sh for shows came up, especially mm. as a as a performer. You that's know, it, I'm understanding that concert is where I met you. In fact, after the gig, I remember saying that. that oh yeah, that I think gig, so. That gig was so monumental in the excellence of music. I oh, said, yeah. this is why I want to join these guys. For me, it was the God factor and the excellence of music. Let, even let me add this. That's the first time, because of watching Kaima do it, because you know him, he had been exposed. The idea of a musical director started making sense to me. Because before I was, I was uh, uh, Eric's musical director, but in the sense of, a, a, but it was even more administrative. Mm -hmm. But this time there's the other musical director who now shapes how the music is, like you're producing mm -hmm. for live. Yep. You know, half live, playing music, there's all these triggers that you're playing, uh, additional elements onto the show. That that have been pre-created before. Mm -hmm. so, so now that's the, so. This was my first experience with half-life half -life. music, playing with a click track on stage. So Kaima was was way ahead with that, because uh, he came and we had all this stuff and he's like, oh, we are playing on, on top of this because they needed background vocals for yep. the music. So he had chopped up this stuff and it was absolutely fine. So, so that was your first experience of Half Life. In that way, yeah. yeah. I knew about it because I had all these DVDs that I watched. Mm -hmm. You know, those 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 uh, DVDs like Asha and all these pop guys yep. who who released. But then now, this is this was the experience in that way. Okay, like, I don't want us to jump over um, Keys of Life. Okay, that was hugely impactful. Yes, 